Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. My name is Alex and I'm joined by Dan from Turf Morehouse TV. You can probably see he's a Burnley fan and this is the opposition Burnley preview. How are you doing, Dan? I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, I thought I'd be a little bit apprehensive going into this fixture, but getting our first three points hopefully will give us confidence to kick on this weekend, mate. Hey, I was on your channel just before. It was it was a live video. All of the people in the comments are saying Burnley are going to beat us. I mean, where, where's this coming from? I know you guys just beat Luton, but come on now. I know. I know. Uh, trust me, it's it's Thursday night. They're all getting a little bit frisky ahead of the weekend. Um, they've probably already been out on a thirst, thirsty Thursday or something. Um, nice but I don't know. Optimism and confidence, it's all well and good having it, but, you know. Don't knock a man down while he's on while he's on the up. No, I mean, well, that's that's the interesting thing, though, isn't it? I mean, both of us at the moment, I would say, both sets of fans are pretty happy. I mean, we we've just come off two wins on the bounce, and obviously, you've beaten uh, Luton as well, which are massive relegation rivals for you this season. If yeah. there's any games you've got to win, it's against them, and obviously, teams like Sheffield. So I can't really see why fans wouldn't be confident going into this game, but. I mean, let, let's just talk about it in a bit more depth. I mean, I haven't watched many Burnley games, if I'm being honest with you. Um, the Luton game was probably one of the few. But, I mean, how, how do you feel about company and the way he's approached the start to life in the Premier League? I go back to when we actually, you know, employed Vincent Company. I think that, you know, he came in with the intention of, I'm going to bring in a lot of youthful players from, you know, talented youthful players from abroad. Something Burnley don't usually do, which is delve into the foreign market. And when we have, they've been piss poor signings, basically. Um, so for us to actually get this talent pool coming in and successful, you know, getting promoted, even company didn't envisage that. I think he thought, bring these youthful players in, they'll nurture over two to three years, and then we'll have a side capable of challenging for promotion. However, we did that at the first time of asking, um, rode our luck at times, but we, we did what we had to do. And now he's thinking, ah, we've now got to somehow run before we can walk. Now, mm. staying up this year, I think everyone's got to look at it like that. That's got to be the priority. 17th and above, be real. If you're a Burnley fan and you're watching this, be real. 17th and above is, you know, for now, what we need to be looking at. Uh, company won't see that as success, being a natural-born leader with success running through his veins. But you know, you got to take the, you know, the um, the rough with the smooth, so to speak. And we are yeah. gonna, you know, we found ourselves in very good positions against good opposition already this year in the few games that we've played. Um, VAR stops us from having a perfectly fine goal against um, Nottingham Forest. So we could have been taught, you know, sat here on seven points. Uh, no, sorry, not seven points. Uh, for, ugh, six points. Um, but it just, it, it's just, it's just one of those. And football's football. It's a funny old game, but that's why we enjoy it. And I, I don't know one team that gets a good, uh, good rap off the referees. To be fair, like as I said, I mean, I was going to say that. Liverpool, but we can't even say that these days, can we? <laughs> I mean, Liverpool deserved it. I mean, just based on the fact that they're Liverpool. But yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> the referees are—they're rubbish wherever you go. So I kind of think, especially if I'm Vincent Company or Pochettino, to be fair, because the referees for us have been shocking. I mean, they're getting worse every single week. I mean, Bournemouth was a disgrace, and then when we lost to Villa, like I, I don't know if you saw that Malo Gusto red card. Yeah, yeah, banned, yeah. Um, he was banned for the last game against Fulham. I think it's completely unjust. Maybe it's just the Premier League. They must have had a rule change that we don't know about. It's like if you get the ball these days, it doesn't mean anything. Like you can't just get the ball. You have to get the ball and stay away from the ankle or the leg. Like it's not football. You know, you, you're not no. you're not dancing around. You, there should be crunching tackles. And I think, especially for a team like Burnley, maybe not so much at the moment. But I mean, if this was the case a couple of years ago when you're in the Prem and the rules were like this. I mean, it would be so difficult for a team like Burnley, for what it was, to go and win games. I mean, you were a physical side. You can't even do that these days. So it's no wonder, actually, when I look at you with, with Vincent Company, you have to rebrand your football because old school 
hoofball, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it just yeah. Dash, dash ball, Brexit ball, <laughs> whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah, it. Brexit ball, it it's, it's just like, it was, it was strange, like, how much it changed drastically because it wasn't even so much when company came in, it also changed. Like, say, we got American owners come in, then they offered Dash a new contract and then, like, say, we got beat. We beat Everton the season we went down. We then gone to Norwich, lost two 0 and it was almost like looking at that game. Players were just playing, thinking, "Ah, eh, this this game's going to take care of itself." And then when it didn't, I think the timing of Dash of sacking was weird. But you know, moving forward from that, the changes just above the optimism that they have at the moment, the things they want to do, the people that they're trying to you know punch Burnley out to. We've recently said on social media that. Taylor Lautner's wearing a Burnley shirt. Um, you know, all these big NFL stars are wearing it as well. And we're just like, what? what's going on? Like, since when did we think Burnley could break America? Not even flaming Robbie Williams and take that and all that stuff could do stuff like that, let alone flaming little old Burnley, you know, to shit all, oh, but it's our shit all. I so, love take that. I just hey. bought tickets for the new tour. <laughs> Have you? I actually did as well. Ah, oh, nice, nice. No, they're not, but I like to take that. I do like to take that. But I mean, in, in terms of like what we're trying to do, the, the shift has been so massive. Yeah. Massive layer. And Premier yes, League don't get me wrong, that, the manager it? does that. You the know, manager has done that. And we had to League. adapt or die with the Premier League. Because yeah. the Premier League were changing. I think that's what we suffered from when we got relegated, was that we were this old, physical, lump it forward team. And everybody else is playing exquisite football, getting it down on the deck, one touch passing, playing out from the back, this gagan pressing, tiki taka stuff. And you're just going looking for that big man up top and thinking, oh, why is it not working? So you have to adapt or die. It, it's one of them situations. I think we've seen recently with teams in the lower divisions, you know, Scunthorpe, Bury, Darlington, you know, these teams that have suffered heavily and you know, Rochdale. Yeah, I'm, I'm t- yeah, I know it sounds silly because I'm mentioning a lot of northern clubs really that have bitten, yeah. bitten the bullet. But we've, we are a small fish in a massive pond, and we've come along thinking, nah, we've got the stomachs that you've got. We, we can punch our weight, and you know, we can take what we get. So I don't know. I, I'm enjoying this brand of football. There's a lot of those people that have been watching since the '60s that. Are still going bump it forward, but what are you doing, idiot? Knock it long. I mean, it does my head in, but you know it, that's it's just football nowadays. That that's why I enjoy sometimes going to your your local non-league sides because you get the old stuff. You know, the pitches are absolutely dog crap, covered in dog crap probably as well, uh, and they're still sliding around that all tomorrow. Uh, crunching tackles, you're actually getting banned because you've had like a punch up and stuff like that. It, Hmm. These are the things that you miss about football. You know, you look back at the vid- days of, you know, I mean, I was watching the other day, um, Ian Britton, obviously, who played for both of our clubs. Uh, he was just, you know, t- a little little nippy player, but he didn't half get some crunching tackles in on him. And you, you just look back and go, ah, brilliant, fantastic. You know, yeah. why, why can't we have that nowadays? Instead, football's becoming this non-contact sport, and it's madness. I think it's ridiculous, mate. mate. I like I I like the idea of going to turf more and playing rugby. That's what we used to do. (laughs) You can't do it these days. But I mean, let's talk about um, Ian Matson. I mean, uh, I can imagine you're obviously disappointed that he didn't come to Burnley, uh, but you had a bit accepted. Um, I mean, where where do you stand on him, and and how do you think he's going to do for Chelsea this season as well? It was a very tough one because obviously on promotion, I thought out of the early on in the season, I thought if we get promoted or we do well at the end of the season, he was the standout over Nathan Teller at one point that, that he's the one go to bring him in, sign him, we need him. Uh, then Teller, Sean, and everyone sort of thought, uh, you, you can start to see a few flaws in Matson's game. Um, so Teller became that main priority. Yeah. In the end, we got neither. Yay! Um, but. Fantastic. <laughs> but I just think matson has got so much potential um, that y- you're in a situation at Chelsea now where you've got a player who's young, he's hungry, thinks he's good enough. 
you know, wants to sit, wants to prove that I'm good enough. I'm more than capable to step up when you need me to. Uh, and I hope he does. I hope he does have a long, successful career at Chelsea. If he's at, like I say, he's at that age now where it's a case of you either play me or lose me, sort of thing. Um, yeah, well, he's only got a year left, has not he? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because I think from what we heard. In the summer, was he's been offered a six-year deal, but he didn't want to sign a six-year contract. And you know, uh, uh, is it going to be another loan move? Uh, it was just everything was up in the air because obviously Chelsea don't want to loan him out with just this year left on his contract, thinking right, well, we've got nothing concrete from our side, and we're losing for nothing. Um, especially after the season he's just had as well. You know, getting a club promoted back to the Premier League, you're almost losing out on a player that's going to create quite a good bit of profit. Mm. But you, like you said, you know, you saw early early days in the in America. He did really, really well. Potts like what he saw. It's gut wrenching because we are screaming for a left back. Um, we've got Charlie Taylor, who's been around the club for donkeys now. I think he's our long, probably our longest serving player in there. Um, but he's, you know, we've, we've got no cover. We've got absolutely no cover, and I'd say Ian Matson walks into that position. Hands down, and if, well, take, if take anything to go by, the type of player that you would have playing out from the back, either. I mean, that's that is a class. No, that yeah, he's he's old school. He is literally yeah. a, a ball to feet, un, in trouble, pump it long, and then you know sa- safety first. Sunday league tactics, but it. I think he's been so used to that under the old regime that now someone's come in that's got this new way of thinking. You know, he tried to convert him to a centre back. It didn't work. He's playing him at left back. He's not bombing forward just as much as he used to do. Um, you know, running, getting in on the overlap over the left winger. But we are needed, needing a left back. We, I was talking, I was speaking to Matt Williams, our transfer guy at the club, um, and he's even said in interviews, we were offered Regulon from Spurs. We were offered regular fund from Spurs and we turned him down because company oh. said he wouldn't fit our system. That's ridiculous. Um, and I'm just like, what? Um, so I think company wants these players that it's like, ah, I know this guy, I know this. It's all well and good picking people you know, but sometimes you've got to take a risk. Um, Matson would have been the outstanding candidate to come back and I'd still take him back at Burnley in a heartbeat. This is the thing, though. I'm looking at Burnley, and to me, I mean, I was I was on a preview uh, earlier on today um, with my friend Kevin, and I think it's fairly obvious that Sheffield seem to be the team that are struggling a lot, but I wouldn't put you far in front of them. I actually see Luton as the team out of all of you that have just been promoted that are most likely to stay up. I don't know what it is about Luton, but they just give me... They just give me that sense that they can dig deep and they can make things happen when they need it to. Um, obviously, I've, I've heard their, their supporters, they've got fantastic fan base. And why wouldn't you, right? I mean, you haven't been in the Premier League for God knows how long. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ever. Um, so I'm looking at it there. And I think if you would have got Ian Matt I, mean, I think he is the player that makes the difference between a team like Burnley staying up and going down. I mean, where else are you going to get those goal and assists from on top of the defensive work rate? Because this is the crazy thing. He's not even a left mm. back for us. We're playing him as a yeah. 10 and a winger. Like, and Burnley won him as a left back and he walks into your team. I mean, to be fair, as Chelsea fans, we're looking at it and saying, why aren't we playing him as left back as well? Because we've got Levi Colwell playing there, who's solid as a rock, don't get me wrong, but yeah, yeah. he's not going to be bombing down the wing, creating chances and scoring goals. He's, he's a little bit more solid defensively, doesn't push up as much. Um, so I think from our side, we're looking at going, well, can we not get a bit more creativity? We're so used to seeing players like Chilwell and Marcus Alonso bombing up there. Yeah, and yeah. now it's, it's kind of changed. Um <laughs> I mean, do you, do you honestly see yourself staying up without, you know, such a key player that you had last season? I mean, what did he contribute for you last year? I mean, he, he got us he got us up and running opening day of the season. We were a screamer against Huddersfield last year. Um, like I said, we opened the EFL season up and we, he, he, like I say, he's, the goal he scored there was phenomenal. Um, 
he can be a bit of a hothead. I think he got sent off against Blackpool. Uh, he got a, like someone nicked him on the ankle, so he got up and he just pushed him over, and he looked like he were about to go and like throttle him. To be fair, um, yeah. but the, I think personally, he's one of those that deep down you see it off the pitch. It's not just the stuff on the pitch that fans fell in love with him for. You know, at Christmas time, he visited families uh, in the local area. Um, people, he got people to nominate on his socials. You know, someone who's struggling or someone who's been having a hard time and needs a bit of a pick me up. And he went round to I think three or four different families with his family and got them gifts. Uh, you know, stuff for a Christmas dinner and things like that. So, like I say, it's not just what he did on the pitch for the club, off the pitch as well. He was very much involved with Burnley Football Club not just I'm here to play for a year and then I'm back off to Chelsea and um, nice. he really involved himself um, with the community and I think that's that's the bigger picture for me I think we will stay up I think we will stay up January is pivotal for a left back we need to be looking for a left back in January we need to have you know option A, B, C, D all the way to Z you know I, I'm, I think we need we need to at least have all angles covered. Would there's I no be? Reason, there's no reason why no. he can sign Matson though. If he refuses to sign a contract, they'll sell him. They'll sell yeah. him. Only will yeah. sell him. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I didn't agree with the fee that were being banded around. You know, or when it said that a fee had been agreed and it were around thirty odd million, and I thought, yeah, shit, that that's quite hefty. Like, where are we robbing this money from? Um, so it, it was. You know, you're expecting a bank heist or something. I, I, half of the time, we weren't even... We were linked with every player that were valued at 15 million this year. So, mm. our squad is very, very young. That's my only issue. You know, under Dash, we had the odd player in there that had Premier League, you know, knowledge, knew what it knew a little bit about it. Um, personally, I'd, I'd have chucked Rodriguez out in the summer. Nothing against him, but... I'd have kept hold of Ashley Barnes. I think him roughing a few people up in the last 10 minutes of games would have been massive. Um, so I'd have done that. But the youngsters we've got, Corley, Luca Corley Osho on the left. I mean, what a player that guy is. Um, he's multi multinational, so there's very good chance that he could play for America, Italy. Um, I, I think there's two others as well in there that he could have technically okay. play for. Yeah. Um, but I think he's 18 or 19, and he's just out of this world. Takes players on for fun. He's where our creativity has come from this year. Uh, and if Manuel Benson stays fit, I think he's another one that the creativity comes from. I just, I, I think we've got something about us. We just need to gel. And it was this time last year, or at least another two or three games, where we started to see it mould together. However, the Premier League is a different kettle of fish to the Championship. It might only be the division below, and we're with a technically 21st best team in English football. But, um, but yeah, it's a completely different ball game in the Premier League, and I'm looking forward to another very, very, very tough test. This It'll Saturday. be interesting. I mean, let, let's just get your score predictions just to round it out, Dan. Oof. Um, head and heart, really, I think. Head saying, ah, come on, why not? Let you know, let's throw the gauntlet out. Nick it one nil, happy days. But I think yeah. the realism, the realism is that we're coming and playing against you at a time where you've hit form. You've hit form. Uh players have players have now opened their accounts or be wanting to, you know, get on a bit of a run. So it, it worries me a little bit. It does worry me a little bit. And I think if we can if we can sort of get a foothold in the opening ten minutes, I think we might be all right. But like I say, realism says we'll get beat two 0 Fair enough, man. Well, I'll be honest. I, I can see us scoring three. To be brutally honest with you, I'm uh, I'm very very confident. But we'll see what happens. Listen, guys, thank you very much for tuning in um, to the preview. Like and subscribe to Dan's channel as well, Turf Morehouse TV. And up the chels.